That day, it was in a practice where they were doing a shooting drill. And for whatever reason, in that moment, he just sank into this beautiful rhythm of shooting the basketball where his form feels perfectly smooth, the ball is just rotating effortlessly off his fingertips and ripping through the mesh. And at, at the peak of it, it's kind of like time stands still. You know, you're not thinking about the shot that you just took or the shot that you're about to take. You're just perfectly in the moment, in the rhythm of shooting the basketball. And it's such a beautiful feeling that uh, at the peak of it, he hit 19 shots in a row. Now, after the 19th shot, he said he turned to his friend who was rebounding for him and he goes, oh man, I am on fire right now. <laughs> now, as soon as he said those words, everything fell apart. So I became interested in understanding uh, what uh, contributed to a life that uh, was worth living. I started trying to understand the, these roots of happiness. This is a typical result that many people have uh, presented and there are many variations on it. But this, for instance, shows that about 30% of the people surveyed in the United States since 1956 say that their life is very happy. And that hasn't changed at all, whereas the personal income on a scale that has been held constant to accommodate for inflation has more than doubled, almost tripled in that period. But you find essentially the same results, namely that after a certain basic point, which corresponds more or less to just a few thousand dollars above the minimum poverty level, increases in material well-being don't seem to affect how happy people are. And in fact, you can find that um, the lack of basic resources, material resources, contributes to unhappiness, but the uh, increase in uh, material resources do not increase happiness. Buying an even bigger house isn't the way to happiness. It's about changing the contents of your consciousness. So how can we change the contents of our consciousness? One of the best ways to do this is to put ourselves in a state of optimal experience called flow. Csikszentmihalyi describes flow as the state in which people are so involved in an activity that nothing else seems to matter. He goes on to say that concentration is so intense that there is no attention left over to think about anything irrelevant or to worry about problems. Self-consciousness disappears and the sense of time becomes distorted. Stillness of mind doesn't necessarily mean that we sit down somewhere with our eyes closed. The Taoists observe that stillness of mind can be combined with action. And if we are completely in the present moment, our actions will go effortlessly, without friction, and accompanied by a razor-sharp focus. So much so, that it's almost ecstatic. And it comes back to that we are electrical currents. We're not wires, we're not switches, we're not gears. spots, we're not gears. Electrical currents. Yeah, they're flows. That's what, the, what is that? So like, uh, you go to a lake, and you drop a big, you jump in there, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a wave that moves through the lake, uh -huh. but the water molecules didn't ride with it. Right. Right? Right. So that's the, the hum, the symphony, uh -huh. the roar, the electrical global waves that are pulsating through our brains. And when people say they're in the zone or they're in a flow state or they're in a meditative state, that, that global energy flow, those waves, they're different. They can be measured and categorized. Really? Right? Yeah. What does that mean when someone's in a flow state in terms of the mind-brain connection? What is happening? You would think that if somebody's about to hit a game-winning shot, 
their best performance is when they're at a high level, meaning wild, frenetic. Actually, no. When they're super calm. Somewhere in between. Okay. So, so not asleep. Right. But not, hey, I'm on my third espresso just taking in stuff in the but morning. Focused. Focused, but relaxed. And there is a measured state for that. And it usually has to do with sort of medium brain waves. That's something I'm writing about right now. And, mm. and whether you meditate or you're under that you, the two minute drill in football or you're a ballerina and you have that that perfect you know dance routine coming up or maneuver um you are actually disengaging some of the things that would get in the way of you releasing a performance so you're not thinking the performance you're getting out of the way you're, you're being you're just yeah and, and that has a different measurable electrical flow state you know and it's not revved up it's not hyperactive, it's somewhere in between. Above calm, but calm. <laughs> it's not fifth gear, it's not idle. Yeah. It's What's the that. fastest way for a human being to get into a flow state? Uh, for that, in my opinion, there are no shortcuts because what, what it takes is a lot of practice mm -hmm. and it takes is a, a lot of learning. And then when you are performing... And being confident in your abilities and yeah. Yeah, but it's executing, you know, I, I don't think you can get into, I mean, I'd be wrong, but when I see my kids, I don't think you can get into a flow state just rolling through Instagram. Right. No. It, it's actually delivering a skill you've trained for. Mm. So you have a craft that you've trained for and you're performing it at a high level. So you see race car drivers talking about stuff like that. So it is sort of a, a, your craft perform just at the edge of your comfort level. Mm. Like video games, if they're too hard, kids will check out. If they're too easy, they'll check out. So something about, it tends to be a physical maneuver. I always find that fascinating where, mm. um, you know, you can think, I guess you could think yourself into one of those states, but you see it a lot with people who do a, a physical task that's challenging, rewarding, something they're engaged in, and at the level of their performance. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, it's a two minute drill at the end of a football yeah, of game. Of course, Probably. yeah. It's go time, man. Yeah. Stillness of mind doesn't necessarily mean that we sit down somewhere with our eyes closed. The Taoists observe that stillness of mind can be combined with action. And if we are completely in the present moment, our actions will go effortlessly without friction and accompanied by a razor-sharp focus. So much so that it's almost ecstatic.